So let's start from the top real quick, just in brief. Like, how are you feeling about Augusta? Great, great. Probably best I've felt about a race in a long time. Best I've felt about a race since February 2020. That's a that's a very rare thing for you, right? Well, I think it's a rare thing for anyone. Like, I mean, or maybe your standards for yourself aren't high enough. Why do you think you feel good about this one? I think it was. I think I got the best possible result. Like I raced to my fitness and executed um, well. You know, like I didn't make any rookie mistakes. You and know. What, what was the result? I was fifth. I was fifth place. One through four were are all ranked top thirty in the world. So, to a certain extent, I was best of the rest, but. It's the best possible result I could have gotten, save for a crash or disqualification uh, up with those top four. So. And that's your best finish. Best finish, yeah, up from seventh. So. Shout out to my new sponsor, LifeStacks. Discount code in the uh, description. <clears throat> MCT powder with nootropics and adaptogens. Nootropics and adaptogens are all the rage these days, but I use this for that extra boost of energy. Sometimes replaces a second cup of coffee if I want to kind of control my caffeine intake. Um, so, shout out Lifestacks. Anyway, let's start Wednesday. Wednesday night at 11.30. Actually, let's just start Wednesday morning. <clears throat> I feel like at every step of this race, something, I don't know, whatever, didn't go my way. You know, when does anything ever really go your way? It's all just luck. But um, my girlfriend Iris was supposed to pick me up at around 7.30 to take me to the airport. Um, and she calls me at 7.30 and her car's dead. So I had to go pick her up so that uh, she could drive my car back from the airport basically, but it was fine You know got got the flight on time flight waits for an hour on the runway because there's like plane traffic or something like that So we didn't take off for, until an hour after we were supposed to and then excuse me, and then we uh, Got into Atlanta and it took another, I don't know, extra 45 minutes after all the baggage claim uh, was out for me to get my bike. I picked up my rental car and I drove two and a half hours to Augusta. So travel was 13 hours door to door. Obviously you're hoping it'll be less than that, but it's fine. Get in at 11.30 and my primary concern on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday was just getting on the time zone. 11.17 p.m. East Coast time finally made it to Augusta. I'm gonna try to get to bed as quickly as I can, wake up relatively early, get on the time zone. Huge shout out to Kevin and Stacy for letting me stay in their carriage house. I was thinking about maybe not doing this race because I didn't know how the finances were gonna work out, but Kevin reached out and offered me a place to stay. So that made it financially viable. So here I am in Augusta. See what happens this weekend, but uh, yeah, it's time for bed. So did that fine, minimal, you know, just tapering exercise. Had kind of a decent bike ride on Thursday, but otherwise it's mostly shakeouts, you know, the little openers, activation here and there. Saturday was carbo load day, glycogen super compensation day, where I have a thousand grams of basically sugar, simple carbohydrates. So that's white rice, muffins, waffles, uh, body armor. You know, I buy a big thing of body armor. Um, basically just sugar, no fiber, easily absorbed, and there is some science behind it. Um, it's not just, I'm not just eating for the sake of it. There is some science behind having basically uh, 12 grams per kilogram of simple carbohydrates. So for me, that is uh, about 900 grams of carbs, and I have you know that extra 100 just to be sure. So 1,000 grams consumed. Start going to bed at uh, about 9.30, a little bit before 10 on Saturday night. Alarm is set for 4.25 a.m. And so I go to bed and then I wake up. It's pitch black outside as, as it would be. And my heart is racing. I'm like, yeah, it's race morning, let's go, let's do it. 
and I check my phone and it's 11.55 p.m. Still Saturday night. So okay, whatever, we'll go back to bed. And uh, I didn't sleep a wink. So I was just lying there, tossing, turning, on my right side, on my left side, trying to just get comfortable. And then as every minute passes that I don't fall back asleep, I get more and more anxious that I'm not falling asleep and I'm ruining my race in real time. So yeah, I end up sleeping two hours on Saturday night into Sunday morning. And I felt absolutely horrible waking up. Um, so that's a PB for not, you know, you never sleep great the night before a race. But that was just a PB for horrible sleep. I had just two hours and then nothing, literally nothing. It was, it was terrible. And I started stuffing down more carbs and I felt really cold. And then I went for a short shakeout jog to kind of get the poop running, um, get the first of the day out. And it was 60 degrees out and I was sweating, like I was hot. And I got back to the house and I was like, I'm thermoregulating really poorly. Like I have, I, I have a fever right now and I got, I got cold again and I got hot again. And that kind of kept repeating basically all the way up to the race. I just felt like I was feverish. You know, I was setting up my bike and, and warming up, going to the swim start. I was 99% sure that this was going to be my first DNF. Uh, uh, no, I knew I wasn't going to DNF, but I thought I would probably walk the half marathon. And yeah, that, that was just how my, my head was going. Um, I was getting pissed off anytime someone asked me how I felt. Um, but there's nothing to do except just do it. And I forgot all about that uh, when the gun went off. So um, actual race, we were on the dock. Uh, it's a downriver swim. The current wasn't super quick this year. So um, I guess not as helpful for closing gaps for a weak swimmer like me, but I lined up with some swimmers who I know are a little bit better than me. If I were to swim with them, that would be really, really good. And then, uh, yeah, gun goes off and I waited like two seconds. I let them just get a stroke or two so that I wouldn't be fighting with people for position. I could just go out behind them because uh, I'm not gonna beat them to the first buoy anyway. So uh, that was a great move because pretty much within 100 or 200 meters, I was like in the pack that I ended up in. So, uh, and especially once I got in the pack, I was really excited. Forgot all about that shit night of sleep. And I was like, yes, I'm finally in this pack. All I have to do is just stay aware, make sure I stay in this pack. And then, you know, you get out onto the bike in a pack and then you have people who you can work with and you can work together to bike quicker. Although that didn't quite end up happening as I had hoped. So get out of the water. It's a really long run to transition. We get out on the bike and it's me and a few other guys. I think Patrick Brady and um, I, don't, I don't know who else. That's, that was the only guy I actually recognized. And we're kind of, I, I took my time getting into the bike. But then once the group, the group just, every person we passed, the group just got bigger and bigger. I kept looking behind and it's like, we got like eight guys, 10 guys. Eventually it was like 15 guys, all just getting a free ride. So for the first, uh, basically 90 minutes of the bike, me and one other fellow, I think his name is Merrick, based on the results, were attacking the group, trying to get away, trying to get off the front. Uh, it never worked, um, but yeah, we just kept trying. And finally, after about 90, or no, more like uh, 80 minutes of that, <clears throat> I said, F this, it's too surgy. And I went right to the front and I split my watch and or split my Garmin and I pushed uh, 315 watts, just which was just like tempo, you know, versus 380 or 280, uh, very surgy. I just pushed 315, just as smooth as I could on the front for the next 40 minutes, basically to the end of the bike. And I knew that I was probably just towing everybody into town. You know, I looked behind and everyone was still there, but I felt that being on the front was a better situation because it was less surgy and I was gonna set myself up for a better run. And I was confident enough in my run that nobody in the group would be able to outrun me. So to a certain extent, I also felt like I was making a really big move. I was like, whatever, I'll tow you guys into town. It doesn't matter, I'll f you up anyway. However, had I known that Marty Andre and Matt McWilliams were in the group, which I, I know their names and I know they're good runners, I just didn't know what they looked like, so I didn't know that they were in the group. I maybe would have been a little bit more cautious because when we ran out of transition, Marty went ahead of me pretty quick and Matt was right behind. So it was a bit of a battle between the three of us for that fifth spot. 
pretty quickly, within a few miles. I was uh, running with Marty and then my zipper came undone and you have to run with your zipper attached at the bottom. So I was fumbling with it, couldn't get it, basically had to slow down to a walk to, to get it zipped back up. So I lost some time there, Marty got a good gap. This was around two or three miles in and I spent the next three miles slowly closing the gap and then around six miles I caught up. I guess we were going through an aid station and I just had a little bit of a gap. Um, I wanted to wait till eight miles to sort of make that move, but we went through an aid station around six miles, had a little bit of a gap, and I just rolled with it. And so the next four or five miles were all about just trying to widen that gap a little bit, extend it, which I was able to do until 10 miles. We get back on for the second loop of the course, and I took a wrong turn. I couldn't tell where we were supposed to get back on course, um, so I lost another 20 seconds there, so I had to keep my foot on the gas. Um, but I would say the run wasn't wasn't very interesting. It was I was just trying to run as smooth as I could and kind of get to 12 miles with a sizable gap. Looked behind at 12 miles, didn't see anyone, and I kind of just enjoyed it the rest of the way. Um, Matt ended up passing Marty and ended up about 30 seconds behind me. I ran 112.53, which was the third fastest run split. Mika and Lionel all ran 112.30, about 20 seconds faster. So, it's a very solid run to uh, cap off probably my best swim and best bike in a triathlon. I normalized, normalized power on the bike was 311 watts, which is the most I've ever pushed on this power meter. Previous best was Indian Wells 2021, 309 average, 315 normalized, um, but this, this power meter reads about 20 watts lower by my estimation. So this was quite a significant step forward from that. I don't know, Johnny, what do you think people want to know? What does this what does this give you now? Like you have this you have this data point, fifth place, you're progressing forward. Where are you now you're looking forward? Where where you where's your head at? So the positive thing is that well I, I am self coached. I've been self coaching for a while and it wasn't you know, it took some time to figure out. Um, but since April, May of this year, I feel like I really started to hit a stride, figuring out what works for me, listening to my body, how to keep the fatigue at a good level. Um, and I did make a video about it, how I'm gonna stop overtraining. I feel like it's just a, a, a schedule and, a, and a, a protocol that is really working for me. So especially on the bike, I feel like I'm finally starting to become or get closer to the cyclist I thought I could be when I started biking. You know, I thought I had potential and then I stagnated, and now I feel like I'm getting there again. So yeah, it gave me confidence that what I'm doing in training is working, and I don't have to do anything special. I just have to keep being consistent week after week, and hope you know that fifth will turn into a podium soon enough. I think I, I, I lost six minutes on the bike to Lionel and Trevor, versus I lost like eight or nine at Oregon. I lost 14 to Trevor at Maine. So. Um, you know, that's, and that's the level. Like those are the guys that if you're gonna swim as sh as we do, if you don't have a bike like that or faster, you will never compete. So that's the level that I have to get to. You know, I'm looking at another 25, maybe 30 watts to get there. Um, you know, once I'm pushing probably 330 to 340 on this power meter, that would be, uh, you know, it's 28 miles an hour, keeping up with those guys. And it's good. I can I can still run decent off of off of. It wasn't the hardest bike, but it was a hard bike. And yeah, I just I I am more confident now that what I'm doing is working. And you know I'm I'm two years away from kind of always being a podium threat. You know instead of hoping I'll get fifth. Well done. Great great result. Shout out couple.com. Um, shout out Lifestacks, both of the shirts are in the laundry, so I'm just in this Lululemon. But um, yeah, thank you to my sponsors who make this all possible. And uh, next up, Indian Wells.